Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Here are five of the many scientists who died unnaturally after they stumbled upon disturbing discoveries. 1. Stefan Marinov Stefan Marinov, a Bulgarian scientist, engineer, and inventor, left an indelible mark on the fields of physics, engineering, and technology. Born on March 10, 1941, in Sofia, Bulgaria, Marinov pursued his education in physics and engineering at the University of Sofia. Marinov's claim to fame rested on his groundbreaking work in energy conservation. He firmly believed in the fundamental principle that energy could neither be created nor destroyed, but merely transformed from one form to another, a concept known as the first law of thermodynamics. Beyond his fascination with the concept of free energy, which involved tapping into seemingly boundless or readily available energy sources, Marinov championed the notion that energy conservation, as dictated by the first law of thermodynamics, was an inherent principle governing the universe. In 1997, Marinov stood on the precipice of a significant technological breakthrough. He had made a remarkable discovery that held the promise of revolutionizing the field. However, tragedy struck on July 15, 1997, when he mysteriously fell from a staircase at the University of Graz Library. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Dr. John Mullen Dr. John Mullen, a brilliant nuclear physicist, once held a position at McDonnell Douglas, a titan in the world of military contracting. In a chilling turn of events in 2004, his life was tragically cut short when he fell victim to a fatal poisoning. Arsenic became the weapon that stole his future. The investigation into his untimely demise took a dark twist when his girlfriend, Tamara Rallo, also met an abrupt end. The authorities initially remained tight-lipped, leaving the media speculating on whether her death was a result of suicide or a calculated assassination. However, the truth eventually emerged from the shadows when the police in Chesterfield, a St. Louis suburb, definitively declared the death of esteemed local scientist Dr. John Mullen a homicide. The community had been anxiously awaiting the results of the long-awaited autopsy, and the findings confirmed their worst fears. Foul play was at hand. On that fateful day, June 29, Dr. Mullen had reported feeling unwell and was swiftly transported to the hospital, but tragically succumbed to his illness. It was only through an extensive toxicology report conducted by the St. Louis County Medical Examiner that the sinister reality was uncovered. Acute arsenic poisoning had mercilessly claimed his life, with his body riddled with this insidious toxin. Despite the shock and outrage that enveloped the public, the subsequent course of action was anything but satisfactory. Astonishingly, the investigation appeared to come to a screeching halt, leaving a trail of unanswered questions and an eerie silence. No further steps were taken to delve deeper into the circumstances surrounding Dr. Mullen's demise, and the prospect of justice in a court of law seemed to fade into the distance. Three, Dmitry Petronov. Besides his work in robotics, Dmitry Petronov made significant contributions to the field of renewable energy as well. He came up with several groundbreaking technologies to harness solar power, including a solar panel system capable of generating electricity even on overcast days. 
One of Petronov's most notable achievements is his pioneering work on plasma batteries, an innovative form of energy storage technology. These batteries have the remarkable ability to store and release large amounts of energy with greater efficiency than conventional batteries. They hold the potential to completely transform the way we utilize and store energy. Petronov embarked on his research into plasma batteries in the late 1980s and dedicated over two decades to its development. His inspiration stemmed from the concept of utilizing plasma, a highly ionized gas, as a means of storing and releasing energy. Petronov firmly believed that plasma batteries could effectively store surplus energy from renewable sources like solar or wind power and subsequently release it as needed. However, in an unexpected turn of events in 2010, while visiting a bakery, Petronov mysteriously vanished, without leaving any trace. Four, Dr. Eugene F. Malov. Eugene Malov was a prominent scientist specializing in the controversial realm of free energy. As a physicist with expertise in cold fusion, he boldly asserted that he possessed a fully operational prototype of a free energy device. Consequently, when his lifeless body was discovered in the driveway of his childhood residence, many skeptics seized upon his demise, attributing it to a premeditated hit, rather than a murder stemming from an argument over unpaid rent and subsequent eviction. At the time of his passing in May 2004, Malov had leased his former childhood home to the Schaefers. The murder charges were directed at Chad Schaefer, the Schaefer's son, along with his girlfriend, Candace Foster, and their friend, Mazel Brown. The investigation unveiled that Chad, accompanied by Brown, returned to the rented home of his family. These two individuals brutally assaulted the esteemed scientist, ultimately resulting in his death. Subsequently, with the assistance of Foster, they endeavored to disguise the incident as a robbery. Curiously, despite the evident link to the Schaefers, it took law enforcement several years to establish the connection and make the corresponding arrests. 5. Aridegius On November 11, 2007, Aridegius, the inventor of a revolutionary affordable clean energy technology, was found slumped in his car, totally unresponsive, in the long-term parking lot of the Charlotte Douglas International Airport in North Carolina. He was taken to the hospital and died a short time later. The autopsy suggested heart failure, so, officials stated that the death was a result of a medical problem, or natural causes, and unlikely to be a homicide. Those who were involved with his research are doubtful, citing, among other things, that he had been in good health at around age 45. The timing is also suspicious. Degius was apparently on his way to Europe, where he was to secure major funding for the development and commercialization of his technology, which could make oil obsolete. Security and media relations personnel at the airport did not respond to numerous phone and email inquiries. Tom Bearden, a well-known figure in the cutting-edge clean energy technology industry, wrote a lengthy report on the inventor, his death, and his technology. He said. Degius was the inventor of a thin wafer-like material or device that somehow specially aligned the atoms or electron currents ongoing in that material, so that the wafer produced a constant amperage at a small voltage, continuous real power, or in other words, a strange kind of self-powering battery. Bearden also speculates about the cause of death, citing a technology that shoots an electromagnetic beam that destroys the body's control of its heartbeat. He said there are two basic sizes of the Venus ECCM technique. One has a range of around 30 feet, and the other, about the size of a bazooka, has an effective range of around 200 feet. Bearden claims to have been hit with such a device along with his colleague Ken Moore while at a restaurant several years ago. They felt the fibrillation and saw the would-be assassin about 20 feet away, with his suit coat pulled back, exposing a book-sized shooter. Fortunately, they were near an emergency exit and were able to get away before a lethal dose was received. Degius had been in Salt Lake City a couple of weeks prior to his death, demonstrating the technology to some people who were also seeking to raise money for its advancement. 
That group said that Degius was not the only person who knew how the technology works, and they hoped to see it go ahead, even though Degius is no longer with us. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.